three-time Formula One world champion Sir Jackie Stewart is a Formula One legend. A dead shot when it came to clay pigeons, his aim on track was rarely off, and his commitment to driver safety fired up those in motor racing who would listen and changed the sport forever. During the 1970 Formula One season, designer Derek Gardner was secretly building Ken Tyrrell's first in-house challenger. Whilst on track, the team persevered with a March 701 chassis to mixed results. What emerged from a Surrey woodshed ahead of the Canadian Grand Prix was the Tyrrell 001, prototype to the car that would go on to win the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships in 1971. The car didn't make the start of official practice, needing a new engine. On the second day, the throttle was not to Stewart's liking, and he jumped between the new Tyrrell and the March several times in the session. It wasn't looking good for Ken's new car. However, in the dying moments of the final session, with grid positions up for grabs, Stewart's March broke down. The Scot dashed back to the garage and jumped into the 001 roared off and on the last allowed lap of the day put in a staggering time of 1 minute 31.5 seconds to snatch pole from Jackie X in the Ferrari. Jackie Stewart made his Formula One championship debut at the 1965 South African Grand Prix and what an entrance it was. Joining the BRM team alongside 1962 world champion Graham Hill the young Scott had a sensational rookie season, his immense talent obvious from the very start. On race day, he produced an assured and almost faultless drive to come home a magnificent sixth, completing a rare feat. Scoring a championship point on debut, it would not be his last in that magnificent maiden season. Stewart's first season in Formula One was nothing short of incredible. Having scored on debut, he was on the podium in four of his next five races, three of those second only to compatriot Jim Clark on his way to another world championship. He broke his Grand Prix duck at Monza after an incredible four-way seesaw battle with his English teammate Graham Hill, Ferrari's John Surtees and the champion-elect. Hill got the better start, leapfrogging the leading pair as they roared away, but as the cars came back round to the start-finish straight, it was Stewart and Clark side by side. Eventually, Clark succumbed to a fuel pump issue and retired, leaving the two BRMs lapping at similar speeds, almost dead heating across the line as the laps ticked down. On the final lap, the tiniest of errors saw Hill touch the gravel and get a little sideways. And that was all Stewart needed to bring his racing green carriage home for a maiden and thoroughly deserved victory. Monaco is the race they all want to win. But the fact that the famous circuit through the streets of Monte Carlo is only open for one weekend a year makes it a Grand Prix that's impossible to practice for. You need to be quick and you need to be fearless. Jackie Stewart was both. He'd been on the podium after his first foray around the Principality as a rookie, but 12 months on, now a seasoned campaigner after that superb debut year, the Scot began the new season in style. P3 after qualifying, as the flag fell, he was soon into second, close behind race leader John Surtees in the Ferrari. By lap five, the chasing pack were out of touch, with Stewart harrying Surtees at every turn. Sensing a problem with his rear axle, the 1964 champion was forced to wave the young Scott through, and Jackie never looked back. Others, such as Jim Clark and Lorenzo Bandini, challenged, but faded, and in the end, just four cars completed the 100 laps, all of them behind the flying Scotsman. Ken Tyrrell's somewhat forced switch to the March 701 chassis in 1970 sadly failed to deliver a repeat of Stewart's 1969 championship success. The Scot failed to complete eight of the 13 races that year, but when he did make it to the finish line, more often than not, it ended in a champagne fight. He lined up P3 at Harama 
behind Denny Hume and pole sitter Jack Brabham. But as the flag fell, it was Stewart who got the better start and led through the first corner. The chasers kept in touch, but Stewart's incredible driving skills more than made up for any deficits in the power of his ride. At three quarters distance, Brabham was right on his tail, and the Scot was forced to use all his undoubted ability to keep the persevering Australian at bay. And after some stylish swerves through the hairpins, Stewart was again able to pull clear. That challenge was ended when the Brabham Ford's engine went bang, and Stewart was able to bring it home to complete a magnificent drive, bagging the fledgling team's first Grand Prix victory in only their second ever race. In the top echelons of sport, brilliance is found in the small margins, and at the 1969 Italian Grand Prix, those margins were as tight as they come. On the final lap at Monza, after 67 gruelling navigations, four men were still contesting the lead. Jochen Rint, Jean-Pierre Beltoise, Bruce McLaren and Jackie Stewart. Rint was leading out of the Lesmo corners. At the Variante curve, Stewart was back in front. As they approached the Parabolica, Beltoise shot past on the inside, but his speed took him wide. The canny Scot saw his chance, cut across to the inside and nosed ahead as they entered the finishing straight. With Rint and Beltoise either side and McLaren very close behind, they raced to the line. Stewart was victorious, just, with a mere 19 hundredths of a second separating the first four cars. That micro-thin victory at the famous Lombardi circuit brought Stewart his first driver's championship and delivered Ken Tyrrell's Matra outfit the constructor's crown. Jackie Stewart had some incredible moments in 1971 on his way to a second world championship and one of his greatest drives was on the streets of Monte Carlo. It would be his second of three victories in the Principality and it was nothing short of majestic. He put his Tyrrell Ford on pole over a second quicker than Jackie Ix in the Ferrari and shot away from the off, taking little time to open up a huge gap to the chasers. He drove the perfect race. As his fuel load decreased, he set fastest lap after fastest lap until each one was a new record. When the chequered flag came, he was over 25 seconds clear of Ronnie Peterson's march. He was the master of Monaco. Sir Jackie's third and final world championship was clinched at the 1973 Italian Grand Prix. And although he didn't finish on the podium, an incredible recovery drive, one of the finest of his career, would see him home to glory. An early pit stop to replace a punctured tyre cost the Scot over a minute, dropping him down to 19th place. Unperturbed, he began to carve his way through the field, every pass a demonstration of his mastery of the art of driving. Working his way back into the points, he broke the race lap record in the process, finishing fourth to claim his third crown. Described by Stewart as probably the best of his career, it was truly a champion's drive. Fans at the 1969 British Grand Prix bared witness to a true battle of the titans as Jackie Stewart and Jochen Rint fought a relentless wheel-to-wheel -wheel duel for the lead. The Scot in his Matra Cosworth V8 had been setting the pace all weekend, but it was the Austrian driver's Lotus that nabbed pole position at Silverstone. The two future world champions jockeyed for the lead in an hour-long contest. Their unquestionable skills, combined with two of the most incredibly engineered cars of the era, produced a racing spectacle like no other, sadly cut short when a loose rear wing forced Rint to pit. Despite eventually winning by a clear lap, this was probably the finest battle of the Scots' maiden championship winning season and one of the best of his illustrious career. As great drives go, there was arguably none finer than Jackie Stewart's performance at the 1968 German Grand Prix, held at the infamous Nürburgring Nordschleife. 
In a year that had seen the tragic deaths of several Formula One drivers, including Stewart's friend and hero, Jim Clark, and Joe Schlesser just two rounds earlier in France, even holding the race was questioned as a treacherous mix of heavy rain and fog descended on the Eiffel forests. What followed was one of the most incredible performances in the history of Formula One. Pushing his Matra through the cold, wet and blinding conditions, carrying a wrist injury that made every turn of the wheel a fight through the pain barrier, Stewart left his world-class rivals in his misty wake. Later dubbed the Green Hell by the man himself, this superhuman effort was a mark of his character and class, and he came home an astonishing four minutes ahead of the chasing pack. And thanks to Stewart's safety campaigning, we may never see its like again.